Africa has long been regarded as the lost continent. However, in the past decade, Sub-Saharan Africa has become the fastest growing region of the world. How should we interpret that growth? Will it last? And will the region be able to outgrow its political fragility? Ewout Frankema, economic historian, studies the history and nature of global inequality. He focuses on long-run African economic development. What drives my overall research is the question of the origins of global economic inequality. Why are people, uh, some people living on one to two dollars a day, while other people live in great affluence? Once you start thinking about it, about the causes, uh, it is very hard to get rid of that question. It sticks to your mind. And the more you think about it, the more you also become aware that this is a deeply historical puzzle. So once you start thinking about global economic inequality, you need to look at Africa. Africa is the poorest region in the world and that has a historical cause, whatever that may be. But most academics are specialists, they look at bits and pieces, local areas. But I defend uh, a more holistic approach towards understanding uh, the issue of inequality. We collect information from archival sources, uh, information, for instance, about the wages that are earned by various types of wage workers. Uh, there's also a lot of price information in uh, historical statistics that we collect. And this allows us to construct long-term series of income, uh, but also of prices. And if you divide incomes over prices, you can say something about the long-term evolution of historical living standards. One of the things we've been able to show is that uh, Africa has had significant economic growth in the first half of the 20th century. Real wages before 1950 were substantially higher, at least in West Africa, than in many parts of Asia. Real wages in Accra, for instance, kept par with Tokyo, the capital city of Japan, the frontrunner of the Asian Industrial Revolution up to the 1960s. And this idea that Africa is in fact capable of growing and increasing material living standards has faded from collective memories um, because after uh, the colonial era, it entered into a long phase of economic stagnation. I'm currently working on a, on a textbook on the history of African development together with a lot of international colleagues. And I would be really happy if that is uh, a textbook that uh, will be used by a lot of African students and non-African students who are interested in processes of long-term economic development, poverty and inequality. A historical understanding helps people to, uh, to understand important social events, current events, and with that understanding they can also shape societal realities.